I think we're functioning now. So it's uh, 6.31 and I will call this meeting to order and just ask everyone to please uh, silence cell phones or mobile devices. I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor Vink. The Council amend the agenda to include the appointment of a Councillor to the Bay of Quinte Regional Marketing Board under unfinished business. Is there any discussion? All those in favour? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And I'll need a seconder for this. I have a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc that Council amend the May 6, 2019 Council agenda to alter the order by moving item 4.2, Fire Chief Rick Caddick verbal report regarding flood awareness and preparation to section 9, spe specifically 9.16, under staff reports. Is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council approve the May 6, 2019 Council agenda as amended. Is there any discussion? All in favour? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And with that, I'll ask if there are any declarations of pecuniary interest, and if so, please state the general nature thereof. Councillor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just in case there is some discussion during the... Um the budget presentation regarding the Press Scale Point Lighthouse Preservation Society. I will recuse myself as I am a member of their board. Thank you. Anyone else? And if there is any discussion under the uh, Hilton Cemetery, as I am a member of the board of Trinity St. Andrews United Church, which owns and operates the Hilton Cemetery, under the budget discussions I will be declaring a conflict there as well. Anyone else? None noted. And announcements. We have one uh, published. Uh, Councillor Tadman. Thank you. I, I think everyone knows here that we are having the grand opening for the, the library and there is going to be a ribbon cutting and cake and maybe a few other drinks. I don't know anything other than maybe tea and coffee and lemonade, but we're also having um, a dedication for um, William Pettengill, better known as Bill, who uh, served on council for about 25 years and was also principal of the schools around the area. And so he, in, it, we are dedicating the children's library to him and uh, his wife is donating a bench out at the front uh, in his memory for um, anybody to use. I think that's about... So we'll see everybody on the 8th of June. 10.30, right? Uh, they've turned it back to 10, 10, I think, okay, on June 8th. And may I have the floor again, because I love You've got it. the microphone, carry on. Thank you. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, tomorrow night we were told the last meeting about the um, uh, the lady who's coming, the speaker's coming to do with the um, internet and all the problems with child pornography, so she will be at the uh, King Edward Park at 7 tomorrow night. And um, she's had personal experience with this in her family, and she speaks all over the world, different places. And it, she says, do, do we really know what our children are doing on their digital devices? Because most of them are much smarter than us and know how to get into all these areas. So that's at 7, and I'm all, I was also told to remind everyone that there's three schools that she will speaking, be speaking at the next day and it'll be different speaking to the kids than what it is to the adults and that is Brighton Public School, Spring Valley and Stocktail and I think that all happens on Wednesday. Thank you Councillor. Oh, and uh, I should say that that's sponsored by the Beacon, our Beacon Centre here in Brighton. Thank you Councillor Tadman. Are there any other Announcements this evening, Councillor Bateman. I've got three. I'd like to mention on Saturday, May 4th, I was pleased to represent the Mayor and Council at the Northumberland Military Tattoo in Baltimore at the arena. It was pipes, drums, highland dancing, and more. They had the Prince Edward Regiment doing tactical stuff, so it was very well attended. And I was pleased to represent the Council there. Also on Sunday, I attended the IG Wealth Management Walk for Alzheimer's, the Quinty West 
Brighton area. And it was very successful. There was a lot of Brighton residents there and they raised in excess of $10,000 nice. at that walk. And also kudos to everybody that was involved in the trout barbecue in Codrington. It was a huge success as well, raising over 3,000, netting just over 1,900 profit. So for everybody that helped out and attended, thank you. Thank you. Council, or pardon me, Deputy Mayor Vink. Thank you. Um, and uh, I was also representing council or uh, in place of the mayor um, at the Legion on uh, Saturday afternoon and uh, they had a fundraiser for their raised roof. I was able to draw some of the names. It was a, you know, fun, fun event. And uh, I believe, what was the amount that they announced to you, Brenda? Where are they at? 89? Yeah, so they're 89,000. That doesn't include what we're giving them, so they are getting very close. So good, it's good to hear. good news. Are there any other announcements? I'd uh, like to announce that the Codrington Farmers Market opened yesterday. I was pleased to be able to be there, and I saw Councillor Bateman there as well. Um, great, great Sunday morning, afternoon uh, thing for everybody to participate in during the uh, spring, summer, fall months before uh, they shut down again for the winter. But uh, lots of, lots of good vendors, and some sad news um, for those of you who may remember: uh, former councillor, former town councillor Bill Mound, uh, passed away in January, and we were just notified of that. That, uh, late last week. Um, former Councillor Mound will be buried at Mount Hope Cemetery this weekend, so I have asked staff to lower the flags to uh, half-mast um, the day prior to and the day after, during and after the, uh, the burial ceremony. So that will happen this weekend. Uh, Bill served on council in the 80s uh, for one or two terms. He was, uh, he was, he was here. Any other announcements? Councillor Bateman. Uh, I shouldn't forget this one. Uh, kudos to Preston and his team because we had the Kiwanis Fishing Derby that took place in not only down in Centennial and Quinney West, but also in Brighton and Gosport. And considering the rain and the water, everything looked good, and I think everybody had a great time in both locations from what I saw. Yeah, good work, and thanks for shuffling sand around so that uh, people get their boats in the water too. It's, uh, it's appreciated that um, things carry on regardless of the crises we may have around us. So move on to the adoption of minutes, and I have a motion moved by Councilor LeBlanc, seconded by Councilor Rowley, that Council approve the April 15, 2019 Council meeting minutes as presented. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Oh, go ahead, Councilor Bateman. I just noticed out of the minutes, one of them, there wasn't a seconder on 2019-287. I don't know if that's required or not. Yeah. The clerk has noted she will look into that, so thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? And we should probably then defer these until such time as those are corrected and brought back. Would that be appropriate? As amended? You'll amend it? So, uh, Councillor LeBlanc, Councillor Rowley, if I put as amended, you're okay with that? Yeah, all those in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. Now we'll move into the public portion, public meeting portion of our meeting with regard to the 2019 budget. The purpose of the public meeting is to hear comments from the public on the proposed 2019 budget and to request a decision of council on the committee of the whole recommendation for the 2019 budget estimates. Uh, Mrs. Whittefield, can you please provide us with information on council's consultation requirements for the budget process? Uh, yes, so the requirement for a yearly budget is found in Section 290 of the Municipal Act. Um, there's no statutory requirement for public consultation, but in the interest of transparency and accountability, the municipality provides public consultation and question period, period at each of our Committee of the Whole meetings. Um, additionally, Council has provided one final public consultation opportunity this evening. Staff advertised for tonight's public consultation meeting in the Brighton Independent on May 1st, last, last week. Um, and the annual budget policy for the municipality provides that the annual budget meeting will be advertised in the local paper and that the public presentation of the annual operating and capital budgets will occur at a council meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Whittefield. Are you prepared to present the budget estimates this evening? Yes, I am. <laughs> Good job. 
It's a big job. I had one job. <laughs> Technology at its finest. Well, I was hoping, oh, there it goes, okay. Um, so, as we've just said, um, our annual budget um, process policy, <laughs> annual budgets are legislated under the Municipal Act, Section 290, and the process that we follow was adopted by Council in the form of a policy in October 2009. Um, a budget timetable was also presented to Council on March 4th, 2019, and the first draft was presented to the Committee of the Whole on March 7th with a, with a complete internal budget overview. The next meetings, which were held on March 13th and 26th, um, were, um, had deliberations that focused on internal budgets and external requests. On April 1st and April 10th, the Committee of the Whole deliberated on the second draft budget and public consultation opportunities were provided at each of those meetings. So tonight we're going to look at um, the 2019 budget and the impact to all of the ratepayers. The budget changes from 2018. What our pressures were this year in, in um, preparing the budget and, and making decisions. Where do your taxes go? Um, local municipal tax comparisons from last year. And then finally, Brighton's municipal challenges and trends. So in 2018, the average residential tax increase, in 2019, sorry, the average residential tax increase will be approximately 3.45%. If your property was assessed at $300,000 in 2018 and it increased by the average assessment change of 2.609%, um, it would be assessed at $307,827 in 2019. The, the county's passed its 2019 budget with a tax increase of 2.27%. Our uh, growth is different than the county-wide growth and therefore um, the county levy impact to the taxpayers in Brighton is 1.69%. And the province has announced its 2019 education rates which also decreased um, from 1.001% seven to point zero zero one six one and that created a, a decrease in um, in the amount that a taxpayer would have to pay for the education taxes and that's how we come up with three point four five percent on that property assessed at three hundred and seven eight hundred and three hundred seven thousand eight hundred and twenty seven dollars the impact is one hundred and twenty six dollars and forty cents in the year. Our total expenditures in 2019 are $29,346,209. Environmental services has the most um, at, over, at just over $10.6 million. And public works is next at approximately $8.2 million. This uh, graph is, illustrates the operating expenditures um, at $14,583,736. Public Works makes up about a third of the budget. Um, water and wastewater are funded by user fees and represent 15.53% of the total operating expenditures. And the capital expenditures in 2019 are $14,000,000. $762,473. Again, water and wastewater are funded by user fees and they make up um, over 56% of our capital expenditures. Um, the main reason for that will be the um, MBBR and the other upgrades to the um, wastewater plant. Um, public Works is just under 25% of the capital expenditures and that's mainly for roads, sidewalks, vehicles and equipment. So this illustrates the um, changes in the budget just for water and wastewater for our environmental services department. The water department operating budget is decreasing um, due to a reduction in the transfer from reserves. Um, the underground infrastructure upgrades will be completed this year on Napier, Monk and Russell streets. 
and the operating budget is increasing for the wastewater department due to wages, maintenance, and loan payments. The MBBR, the force main and lift station upgrades are included in the budget with funding from reserves and external borrowing. And the underground infrastructure upgrades will be completed as well on for wastewater on Monk, Napier, and Russell. So the tax support budget change. Um, the total tax support budget is increasing by one point, just over $1.5 million. The capital portion of, of, the, of the increase is $1,203,235. Reserves will be used for capital projects and for studies and major maintenance items. Grants include federal gas tax, our Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund, and the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund. Borrowing includes the renovations for this municipal building, addition to the Brighton Health Services Centre, and also the Alice and Dundas Street Road, or Alice and Dundas Road projects from 2017, which we have not received or um, put in our application for funding yet. Fees and charges are showing a decrease mainly from the proposed ticket sales for the Applefest concert that were included in the 2018 budget and for the donations for the Memorial Park stage in 2018. The budget increase for 2019 is $766,620 and the tax increase is $561,896. So as illustrated, the budget increase is simply the difference in the total operating and capital budgets over the prior year. But during any given year, the assessment base may change due to growth. This growth can be positive or it can be negative. Positive growth occurs when there's a change in a property state, condition, or use, and is attributable to things like construction, additions, improvements, and change in use, such as going from residential to commercial or residential to farm. Um, negative growth can also occur because of assessment reductions. And Again, that's change in use, demolitions, tax write-offs. Again, in 2018, as we have in the last several years, we had positive growth, and it provided additional tax revenue of $204,723. If we add that 2018 growth to the 2018 tax levy, we arrive at a tax levy comparator of $8,150,946, and that's how we come up with the tax um, increase. So of that $766,621 total increase, um, these are the impacts, or this is what impacted that budget increase. Um, so as you can see, um, the External budgets uh, and the library board increase contributed 0.78% of our 6.89% tax increase. Increases to service delivery, such as your um, stormwater um, initiatives for this year, your increases to roadway maintenance, and your new partnerships for tourism uh, contributed 3.95%. We have an increase to our planning department, and that is 1.6%. We have increased to capital expenditures, 0.73%. And the other internal operating actually decreases by 0.18%. So again, this is just by department, but you can see at the bottom the total increase is $766,620. And this is how the different departments impact that, that increase. Um, you can see the general government is actually a de decrease. That's an unfair decrease because the library board is showing a, a large increase due to the, the difference in what they're paying for or we're attributing to their use cost. So general government is actually benefiting from the extra revenue. So where do your taxes go? 37.6% um, of your taxes that you pay here in Brighton 
stay here to pay for your local services. 62.4% of that, those taxes that are paid here go elsewhere. The county receives 38.4%. Education, the school boards receive 13.1%. Policing is 9.5%. And then the other external agencies make up the difference. So this table and graph illustrates the changes to our municipal budget over the last 10 years. And it's, it's healthy to see capital increasing. It's also healthy to see reserve contributions increasing. Um, so it, it illustrates that we're going in the right direction. In 2018, Brighton had the second lowest tax rates in the county. We actually lost some ground because we had been third lowest for a number of years. Um, on a property assessed at 300000 in 2018, um, taxes in Port Hope Urban were $4,793 on the high end. And on the low end, all called men's taxes were $3,533. And Brighton's were $132 higher at $3,665. So now we're going to go through a few slides that will show the work that was done um, to, to build the budget this year and the projects that were included. Um, so for plans and studies, we're going to complete our development charges study, which we started late um, in 2018. Also, um, there's a committee working diligently on a mature neighborhood study, and that's underway and will be completed soon. And we've started a comprehensive zoning bylaw update and an official plan update. For accessibility initiatives, um, we're, we've completed the library renovations. The completion of that is included uh, money-wise in the budget. Also new sidewalks on Monk, and Napier, and Russell, and if, um, were we doing something on Ontario Street? Uh, maybe, that's, maybe that's a mistake. Sidewalks on Monk, Napier, and Russell. Um, we're updating the visual equipment in council chambers. And we have an enhanced sidewalk maintenance budget. So this slide illustrates our service delivery enhancements. And, and um, council, early in the term, looked at the organizational chart and made some changes and we've changed manager positions to director positions in both public works and in planning and we've um, council approved and we've budgeted for two shared parks public works operator positions um, last year and in previous years we we had a seasonal two seasonal parks um, positions which have now been changed into full-time uh, shared positions. We also have a GIS technician position in the organizational chart. We've included 120,000 for sidewalk maintenance and repairs, 180,000 for brushing and for ditching, increased maintenance to our stormwater system, partnering with Bay of Quinney for tourism, partnering with the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce for the Apple Fest, and partnering with physician recruitment through the Trenton Memorial Hospital Foundation. In addition, um, a new contract for medical oversight and training for our volunteer firefighters, and increased engineering for shovel-ready projects in future years. So the asphalt road projects are the ones that are carried over from 2018 and the surface treatment, renewal or overlay projects are listed here. And then our environmental services projects, engineering and design of the Harbour Street pumping station, design and construction of the MBBR for our sewage treatment, valve replacement, and a bypass chamber at the lagoon and some aerators. And water, we're um, looking at water modeling this year and a booster station study. These are some of the organizations that we're partnering with. And although this list is not exhaustive, this is, um, these are some of the organizations receiving support in the 2019 budget.
And so thank you for, um, thank you to council for all of your help in getting this budget um, completed and also really thank you to the senior management team for all their hard work. Thank you, Mrs. Whitfield, and <clears throat> thank you to all of staff who contributed to uh, this process and to council for, uh, for your uh, diligent deliberations and uh, coming down this road. I, I do have, I will, I'd be specifically asking you if you have any comments in a moment. Is, if it's okay to wait, I was going to open it up to the. I just wanted to show the Oh. I'll take the in, in upgrading our AV system for the council chambers, we should have a significant cost savings in sticky notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, by about 10 cents. Are there persons present who have questions or comments regarding the budget presentation and the 2019 budget as recommended by the Committee of the Whole? Come on up. Thank you for the record, David Green. Um, I was able to attend uh, most of the budget meetings and I spoke a couple of times. And I'll use this time to make a comment and to ask a question. When we left the April 1st budget meeting, the expected blended tax increase was 4.8%. And for the most part, council had their head around that. When we met on April 10th, the Director of Finance reported that because of a few changes, uh, the reduction at the county level, the school board rate had dropped, and we took $76,000 from the Urban Infrastructure Reserve Fund, that the reported blended tax rate was now 3.45%, which is the rate we're speaking about tonight. What bothers me is that we could have accomplished more. We had our head around the 48 Yet, as soon as there was discussions, and as soon as you heard there was a 3.45 opportunity, the 4.8 went out the window. That was disappointing. Um, I think there was an opportunity to put some money either in the bank or to extend some more projects, one way or the other. And, and this 1% is about $20 a year per household. Not a great amount of money in my mind. But I'm not sure that that was the correct discussion or decision. Um, but we've hashed it out already, and I'm not here to debate it, but uh, I, I, I'm optimistic that we will continue to make the progress that we've talked about. I just think we could have done more. Uh, my question, uh, it's May the 6th, or 126 days into uh, this year. That's 35% of the year gone. And I understand the challenges this past fall since the election. Uh, I was in attendance when a number of projects had to be approved before the budget was finally accepted. That's another sign that we're waiting too long into the year to approve the budget. So my question is what plans could be put in place to start the budget process earlier in the cycle and maybe get out of the gate earlier in 2020? Thank you, Mr. Green. So to answer, I won't, I won't speak to your comment. I hope you understand that, but I will answer your question. In speaking with senior staff, um, it's my understanding that they intend to begin their pre-budget uh, discussions uh, sometime in the summer so that uh, deliberations can, can hit the council chamber or the committee of the whole um, sometime in the fall rather than waiting until well, this year it was March. Yes, yeah, so yeah. that, and that, I think that'd be ideal and we could be first in line as opposed to not first in line. So thank you for that. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of the public? Thank you, everyone. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that council that council receive the Director of Finance 2019 public budget presentation. Is there any discussion? Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Is this the time to make some commentary or do we do that later at the bylaw? Um, this would be the time. May I then make a few comments? Yes. Would that be okay? Yeah. Uh, first of all, Mr. Green, I think you cheated and read my notes. So 
Um, but anyway, I'm, I've just got some notes that I would like to read. Uh, first of all, I will support the 4.45 tax increase. I was also hopeful that we could have added a small one and a half or a half percent. That could have been the beginning of an infrastructure reserve uh, for future um, much needed upgrades in both the rural and the urban areas of our municipality. I believe that the day of the 1% or minimal tax increases are over because we are not getting ahead of the curve. We are slowly getting behind. Our road needs, the concern that I have is, is roads for sure. Remember this year, we didn't add any new urban roads. We are doing last year's work. Also, after listening to the budget presentation from our friends at the County Council, we also need to be concerned with their ambitious projects, and yet, like most, modest increases. Having been to AMO, or OSEM this past week and listened to discussions, the province is making significant cuts to social services. And although this is a much needed responsibility and it runs through, through the county, I'm sure that we will be they will be looking at their our seven municipalities for levy increases to offset the cost of these most important initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Are there any other members of council who have questions or comments? Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm not going into a lot of detail. Uh, those who missed missed all the times, but they can go online and hear. I do not support the 3.45, and I definitely do not support 4. 0.45 or whatever Councillor uh, Roundley was talking about an extra half a percent to bring it up even higher. I think there's just too many people that are struggling and what some people think isn't very much is a great deal when especially the users in Brighton who have got whacked with a huge amount for our sewer and water and on top of it the carbon tax and everything else it all adds up and and, it, and we're we're, um, we're not all, all on fixed incomes, but there's enough people here on fixed incomes. And uh, I just want to remind you, Mayor, that I was getting rid of a lot of stuff, and at one time you wanted to hold the taxes, freeze them for two years, and then hold the future rates at a cost of living. What happened to that? We've been doing that for years around here, and we seem to manage okay. When I drive to other municipalities, I, I hear from around this table that we're in such a bad mess, but when I drive around the other areas, their roads, a lot of them are a lot worse than ours. There is some here that need fixing, but I think we've done a pretty good job in the last few years. Thank you, Councillor Tadman. Any other questions or comments from members of Council? Mr. Councilman, do you have any comments with regard to the budget? Thank you. Mrs. Whitfield, do you have any final comments? No, I do not. I'll call the vote. All in favor of Mrs. Whitfield's budget presentation. Any opposed? The motion is carried. Go ahead. I have a recorded vote on that, please. This is just the presentation. It's not That's the not the, by not the bylaw. The bylaw is coming later. And I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that Council receive the public comment from the 2019 budget consultation. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And the bylaw does appear in bylaws later in the agenda. So we'll take a look at that then. Thank you again, Mrs. Whitfield. It's appreciated. We do have two delegations coming. We do have two delegations this evening. Our first is uh, Mr. Wielden to propose the formation of an environmental advisory committee. And uh, I'll just advise both uh, delegates this evening that we offer 10 minutes per delegation. So uh, is Mr. Wielden here? Did he just step out? Is council okay if we offer the delegation to the county first then? Everybody okay? If you would, please. So this is Denise Marshall, Manager of Engineering, and uh, Mr. Panu is in the background there. I can see he's, uh, he's going to let Denise take the wheel here. Um, Mo is the Director of Transportation Waste and Facilities for Northumberland County. Um, Ms. Marshall, please go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Ostrander. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak tonight. Um, we are here to speak about a joint funding application, which is through uh, the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program. Um, 
through the investing, it's the ICIP just for short, so I don't have to say that over five times throughout the presentation, um, but through the ICIP, the federal government's providing federal funding for cost sharing uh, with both provincial and municipal uh, governments in four different streams. Um, there's public transit, green infrastructure, community cultural recreation, and then rural and northern communities. Um, the stream that we're here to talk about tonight is the rural and northern communities uh, stream, and there will be a funding available for 10 years starting in 2018 and 19. Um, this intake is focused on near-term transportation projects. Um, so eligible projects would include new rehabilitation or replacement of roads, bridges, air, um, or marine projects. And each project must include a capital component, so some sort of construction component, but can also include planning and design as well as um, pre-construction planning and design. So each municipality can only submit one project for this uh, current intake and the um, maximum total eligible cost is $5 million of available funding per municipality. Uh, joint projects are encouraged, encouraged and additional consideration is also being given for any joint projects uh, during the assessment phase. Um, and so with a joint project, the amount of available funding increases as well. So each municipal partner would be have um, availability um, to an additional $5 million in funding eligibility. Um, so the assessment criteria, there's four main assessment criteria. The first is the criticality of health and or safety risk. Uh, the second is the technical merit of the project itself. Uh, funding need for the proposed project, and this is based on a calculation that is done um, based on the cost of the proposed project per household, and it looks at median household income and weighted property assessment per household. So that is sort of a fixed um, a criteria. Um, and also at efficiencies through joint projects. So this goes back again to favoring joint project submissions. Um, so I'll get into a little bit about the project that we are looking to submit an application for. Um, through the development of the county's transportation master plan, um, there was consult consultation with uh, the municipality of Brighton, um, township of Cramie, as well as all the municipalities within the county. And one of the um, areas that was identified was the current emer emergency detour route that is located south of the 401 through the municipality as well as the township. Um, everywhere else within the county, the EDRs have been moved north of the 401. Um, this was identified as a priority, a top priority in the EDR or in the TMP. Um, in order to, there's a number of benefits for moving it north of the 401 versus all the congestion and impact to the downtown core of Brighton and Colburn. Um, it also has a significant impact to the residents and property owners, the businesses. Um, it has wear and tear on the local roads that go through the down, the downtown. Um, and it's also quite a bit longer um, EDR route as well. So um, the re the ident it was identified to move further north onto Telephone Road, and relocation would involve widening of the road. Uh, there would be sort of geometric design changes. We'd be looking at the um, any structures that are there, any rehabilitation of culverts, and um, also looking at traffic control markings and signage and everything else that we would look through during design stage. Um, as I mentioned before, this funding application would include the detailed design and planning stages as well as construction um, and a high level cost estimate for the project um, that would be submitted for the application is $13.4 million. Um, through the application, we'll be requesting the maximum amount of funding, which is 83.3%, which would result in $11.2 million in funding um, between the federal and provincial governments. Uh, the county would contribute 10% of that remaining, which is about $1.34 million, and we'd be looking to uh, the municipality as well as the township to each contribute 3.34%, uh, which would be about $447,000. Um, funding announcements. Well, first of all, applications are due May 14th of 2019, so approaching very quickly. Um, the funding announcements are anticipated in the summer or fall of 2019, and the project themselves have to be completed by October of 2026. So there is quite a bit of time in order to be able to uh, do design and construction and planning, even though for a project this size that is still ambitious. Um, the reason we're here tonight is that a resolution of each of the municipal councils is required to be submitted as part of the application process. Um, and so we are here at council tonight. Uh, we'll be attending Crammy Council tomorrow night, and we have a special county council meeting on Thursday, May 9th as well for a resolution of county council. 
Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have at this point in time. And I know that I think there is a, a resolution further on in the agenda. Thank you, Ms. Marshall. So I will read the uh, the motion and then open the floor for discussion. I have a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The Council received the delegation from Denise Marshall uh, from Northumberland County regarding the ICIP funding and EDR relocation project. Councillor Anderson. Thank you. I Reading through that, I was pretty encouraged with it. Actually, uh, it's a lot of money, a lot of time involved, but uh, I think it's something that could be uh, we should really be excited about. Uh, one thing you didn't mention is the, about the time frame that you have to have the answer uh, or commitments. Isn't it very soon? Like it was in I forget the date. It, May fourteenth. She did mention May fourteenth. Yeah, yeah. The application is has so May it. Uh, we need to do. We, uh, what if? Uh, one of the communities doesn't take uh, uh, agree to it or we we have been working with staff with both um, municipality and with uh, the township um, and I know that both councils I think have been given some um, information from staff so we believe that there is support on both ends and we hope that it um, to get a resolution from from all councils um, at the end of the I guess we'll we'll see where things go we're hopeful and optimistic that there would be a resolution um, from each of the councils since it is a really good funding opportunity. Just what but it, added, but I think to answer the question, if, if one of the three councils does not go forward, the project is dead. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Vink. Thank you. Wondering if you could just give a little bit more information. Um, so you were talking about moving it to Telephone Road, which is north. Um, Telephone Road is north in part of Brighton, but it's on the south side. On the, so just explain <clears throat> will it, where the DR will be on the other side and, and that sort of thing for us. Sure. So the limits for this project, which I should have mentioned, they are from County Road 30 to County Road 25 between those two interchanges. The EDR throughout the rest of the county is north of the 401. So um, on the um, the east side, it goes up County Road 30 and across County Road 41. Um, so it is already north on just further north on other county roads. Um, so those are the limits. So it is completely north of the 401 between 30 and County Road 25. Mm -hmm. It's approximately 11 kilometers. And for those of those of you who don't know the numbers of the county roads, that's the road to Wooler. <laughs> that's the east part. That's the eastern EDR. Yes. And right now, our, our EDR between Cramie and Brighton is Highway 2. It's County Road 2. So mm -hmm. trucks um, truck traffic goes through both downtown Colborne and downtown Brighton at the moment during a, a highway closure, which is really why the want to move this north of the 401. Deputy Mayor? One other question. Um, we, we can move it, but how do we make people use it? Because we know what happens. They still will take the easiest route. We have them going down Bowes Road, you know, and running into the train bridge on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no there's no way to make anybody do do anything. The roads are are public roadways, as you know. Um, what this does, it will it will mitigate the the amount of traffic we have in those non EDR spots by um, by signing the roads so that uh, traffic knows to go or theoretically knows to go to go north. But we know that. Most people now use uh, GPS, and the GPS takes them to the uh, the quickest route. Um, sometimes, even when there is no route, as we've uh, seen down Tees Lane in Brighton, where the trucks come to a screeching halt um, because the map shows that the road allowance is open when it is in fact not. <laughs> On the way to 30, Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Denise. Um, I think this is a no-brainer. Uh, if we can get 83% funding from the, the feds in the province, and it's only going to cost us somewhere around 420,000, was that what you were saying, Brighton's? 447,000. Okay, $20,000, what the heck. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't see why we'd turn it down. We, we have that much problems with the, the roads getting wrecked all the time, so it would pay for itself in no time. And we do have a lot of problems in the winter time, with especially in the winter, but in the summer too, when the 401's closed. It, it causes a lot of problems in, in the downtown area. So I fully support it. Thank you, Councillor Tadman. That would that would amount to about a five percent tax increase. Just FYI, Councillor LeBlanc. You no, know, we can work around that, uh, Mayor. Well, I went to the uh, farmers market also, 
and I met a, a few people that live on Telephone Road, and I have uh, three employees that live on Telephone Road, and I've some of my ex-neighbors from Ontario Street I met also. So I talked to them on Sunday about this, and every I thought I would get some negativity, not at all. They were all welcomed the enlargement of the road, and I said you might get a whole bunch more traffic. We don't care. The road's going to be much better to drive on, better drainage. We won't have the ice problems that we have now. And it'll solve it. So I'm in favor. The only thing is, like I talked to the mayor, will it affect some of our other grants that we ask for? Because we ask for other grants. Will this be a total grant allotment which will swallow up all the rest of the grant money that we ask for? Councilor LeBlanc, I'll get you to park that question and ask that of um, Mr. Mr. Castleman, when we get to his report later in the in the meeting, so you, if you don't mind, you, thank no, you. No problem. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from members of council? Council Bateman. I just want to thank you as well, and I agree with Councillor Tadman. I think it's a good idea. Based on the number of closures, I don't know, have the number. I don't know if anybody has that number available, but I, based on what we've seen, it's been closed multiple times and just 2018 2019 it'd be interesting to be able to bring that number to council because i know for some reason in the napanee area there have been multiple closures summer and winter and it seems to be getting worse so i don't know how we can get those numbers but yeah um statistically speaking this winter it's been a lot yeah <laughs> i'm sure we can get those numbers from the opp I'm sure the OPP would have those, and if uh, uh, the Deputy Mayor reminds me at the Police Services Board, I'll ask that question at the next PSB meeting. I know you're not, but <laughs> I need someone to help me out. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from members of Council? <laughs> Councillor Tad. Just one thing through you, Mayor, to, to Nice again. I was on Telephone Road today. That is one heck of a slope going down there for big trucks. Would that be leveled out some? That's something that we will look at during detailed design phase. Yeah. Um, the geometric changes that at, at this point we, we haven't done that assessment yeah. fully, so that will be something we'll explore and, and how we can make improvements. Okay, thanks. Anything else? else? Councillor LeBlanc? Would this road, uh, telephone road, be assumed by county if this happens? Yes, that is the intention that upon completion of the project that the county would assume telephone road. Yeah, well, I'm in support of it. So the motion is to receive the report and or to receive the delegation. We do have a staff report later in the meeting to consider in this regard. So all those in favor, any opposed, the motion is carried. Okay, Mr. Wielden, we didn't we didn't punch you out of the room. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. There you go. <laughs> I'm always brief. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> And just a reminder, you have 10 minutes for your delegation. Go ahead. I, I don't want to take 10 minutes. Um, for the record, I'm Jeff Wielden, here to talk about an Environmental Advisory Committee of Council. I'm sure you've all um, been paying attention to the news and you know that the state of the world is in rough shape. A newest report came out saying that there's over a million species near extinction at this point. The problem is us. We can stop it if we take action. We've seen increases in catastrophic weather events, not just here in Ontario and Canada, but around the world. And each one of those costs enormously, first of all in lives and second of all in billions of dollars. Uh, militaries now recognize climate change as the great threat in the world. In the state of Ontario, things are also a little bit um, changing, maybe not for the better. There's a lack of leadership in environmental issues and supports. There's cuts in our conservation authorities and other um, environmental regulations and bodies that help us at the municipal level to uh, maintain the integrity of our environment. And as for the state of Brighton, well, that's, that's up to us. There is an enormous role of municipalities in climate action. When the U.S. declared that they were not going to ratify the Paris Agreement, uh, about five dozen municipalities in the U.S., some of the largest cities in the world, all stepped up and said they would anyway. Um, there's a huge role of municipalities in reforestation and creating urban forests. Coburg has an urban forests plan. There's roles in municipalities in transit, zoning, built environments, waste diversion, restriction of pollutants, Municipalities are leading, and there are a number of municipalities in Canada that have declared states of emergency, states of climate emergency, which is something we're just finally starting to see at a federal level in a few countries in the UK and the EU. Municipalities can lead the way, and there's a lot that we can do about that. Um, 
in the official plan for Brighton, the environment is uh, it is mentioned, but very very briefly. Now I understand that it's it's important that the environment not be treated as a single issue that we have to address specifically, and I really support that. Environment should be something that is addressed as a matter of course on every issue. That said, uh, we do not currently have any sort of body in place that would draw attention to potential environmental issues, provide any sort of feedback or recommendations along those lines. And that could be of tremendous help to Council at this point in time when we don't really have leadership from the province or the feds, and we have a lot of issues that are coming up very quickly at us. So I propose that Brighton adopt uh, a committee of council, an advisory, an environmental advisory committee to address these issues, to provide feedback and recommendations to council, and to serve as sort of a, a collecting pool for a lot of the issues that do come forward already. As it stands, as a local green candidate, I have a lot of people who approach me about what are actually municipal concerns, um, either because they, they don't know which level of government needs to address it, or because they know my, my environmental affiliations and um, want my support or, or direction in that. Um, I'm quite happy to provide that, but I think it would be far better for Council to have a committee of its own to address these issues. And I think it would be a great use to Council to have this body that can review these issues as they come in and sort of vet them, provide them with some support to uh, maybe be fleshed out into larger proposals rather than one-off issues, and uh, pass them in an orderly way from a committee to Council. Um, I think that the Environmental Advisory Committee should be run as all of the Environmental Advisory Committees are. Uh, there are provisions for advisory committees. We currently have five. I think this one uh, could be of great service to the municipality. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wielden. I have a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council receive the delegation from Jeff Wielden regarding the proposition to form an Environmental Advisory Committee. Are there questions from members of Council? Councillor Tadman. Through you, Mayor, to Jeff. Um, I'm quite interested in what you had to say here, Jeff. Interesting that uh, the water level is so high where I live and around the whole Bay Area and in other places. And I was out north today and a lot of farmers can't even get on their fields. They're so flooded. And things that I've been noticing for a long time, uh, I live at Gosport at the water and I, I can't remember the last time I saw a frog mm -hmm. and that used to be a hobby for me when I was a kid catching them and you hardly hear many bullfrogs even croaking down in the marsh uh, and what really shocks me is uh, if you go to dig up a few dewworms to they're not dewworms anymore there's something that looks like a biafran worm mm -hmm. uh, so something is really wrong with the environment I was talking to some people that live on the other end of Gosport today and I asked them and they said oh we've seen the odd frog once in a blue moon there used to be frogs everywhere mm -hmm. um, and the same with every time it rained you would see frogs and toads out on the road uh, you you know you could I, I remember my mom selling dewworms and she'd go out at night and fill cans in no time and my brother but they're not there anymore so something is wrong and I and I think we need to do something about it, so I would support this. I, I know that uh, there has to be a term of reference, and that's something that you'll need to talk to. As, the as, CEO. Of, as of right now, the motion is simply to receive right. the delegation. So, But I'm just, sit, I'm just saying that there's a lot to be done before it can get going. It has to be advertised and all right. the rest. Absolutely. Right. Any other questions or comments? Councillor LeBlanc? <coughs> Like you, I am an environmental guy. Made my living at it through the military and through private industry. And to Mary Tadman's thing, frogs are now the canaries. They used to bring canaries in the mine, and frogs are now the canaries of the water. And you look at water systems that have no frogs because the minor, small amount of contamination from a little bit of gasoline will, will just destroy all the eggs and the fertilization of them. The other thing that I've noticed is when I was a kid, I used to be able to get, catch all the honeybees I wanted. Now I have all the nice flowers and stuff and you don't see them you don't see them anywhere there's also some problems with some of the green stuff like the windmills like i didn't like when california approved 
the death of 500 bald eagles was acceptable just to have the green energy to come, right? Yeah. When I wanted to, I wanted to build uh, two 10 kilowatt uh, solar panels on my land in Brighton. I realized that the temperature would go up by 1.8% just from the solar heat of the solar panels. And I, I didn't allow the projects to go through on my property because of that. Because people didn't understand how much 1.8 degrees Celsius temperature increase, how much it changes the local environment. So I wouldn't allow them to go on. So I, I agree with you that we need a committee. Some people have done big work on stormwater management plans to help us up to what the goes in our creeks and stuff. And so I, I would be on that with you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your point, uh, Councillor LeBlanc, that even development that we consider to be environmentally oriented, such as windmills and solar, panel, solar panels, if they're done without oversight, they can actually, in some ways, make problems worse rather than better. And so we need to proceed in a responsible way, which is why it's good to have people who are looking at and double-checking these kinds of things for their impacts. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from Council? Councillor Anderson, this is your motion. Um, if we just receive this report, or we just receive the delegation, then nothing further happens. Um, would you be amenable to having it amended to say um, and refer to staff for a report and recommendation? And Councillor Bateman as a seconder, are you okay with that? So the motion remains the same. I have just added and refer to staff for a report and recommendation. Any further questions? All in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wielden. Appreciate your time. There are no citizens' comments this evening. Thank you. We move on to staff reports. Our first report is from the Director of Parks and Recreation with regard to a truck tender. Uh, Mr. Miller, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Um, not, not at this time, other than the fact we're under budget for this. Thank you, Mr. Miller. And I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that Council receive the staff report regarding the results of the truck tender number REC 2019-01, and further that the Municipality of Brighton Council award tender REC 2019-03. So should the first one be 03? for the supply and delivery of one 2018 or 2019 half-ton two-wheeled drive work truck for the Parks and Recreation Department to Scott Drummond Motors Limited of Campbellford, Ontario for the pre-tax tender bid of $32,874. Is there any discussion? Councillor Rowley? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, not so much about this particular tender, but the tender process um, in general. Um, my question is, why would we have to come back a second time to approve a tender as far as dollars that we had already approved uh, previously? Um, um, we, we approved to, to not only to Parks and Rec, but also to uh, Mr. Preston, Public Works. I sat in the opening of the uh, tenders on April 17. We are now three weeks farther into the year. Um, if we've already approved dollar amounts, why should we have to re-approve the, the tenders in the first place? I would say unless there are values that are over budget or that staff need to um, explain reasons why they didn't approve maybe the lowest tender received. Uh, should we be reviewing our tender approval process slash purchasing by law? And I'll turn the floor to over time. to Mr. Castleman for an explanation. Uh, the quick answer is absolutely we should be reviewing that. That's certainly uh, one item that uh, I've noticed early on during my tenure and I happened to attend the, uh, the same tender opening that, that you did and uh, my authority to award tenders is at $25,000 in my view uh, far too little. Uh, tonight we're dealing with eight, nine, ten different tenders and the bottom line is um, council sets the policy. If we have followed the policy in going through the tender process and we've also budgeted for a particular item, 
then I should have the authority to award the contract unless it's above a certain limit. And $25,000 should not be the limit because, quite frankly, you have eight or ten reports before you that are fairly straightforward that I could have awarded three weeks ago and gotten on with the acquisitions. May I make you another follow-up? Yeah, yeah, basically. I'm well, is it a follow-up or is it basically a follow-up? It's, it's just an add-on to Mr. Castleman's comment. So it's a supplementary. It's Carry supplementary on. comment. Carry on. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, I would suggest that we could save time. I mean, we're, we've now delayed again three more weeks for our staff to get much-needed equipment, which also puts maybe much-needed projects three weeks later down the road. I would like to be able to, or I would suggest that we review that policy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rowley. Councillor LeBlanc. Through you, Mayor, through the CAO, what should be your expenditure? Your microphone needs to oh. be kept. Through you, Mayor, through the CAO, what should be your expenditure? Uh, that's probably a discussion for a policy uh, review, and I suspect that after tonight we may see a policy review happen and be brought forward to Council, unless uh, Council is, is absolutely not in, in favor of moving that forward. So. Um, I, I guess what we would have to wait is for staff to bring uh, a new policy forward and for council to consider that. Do you have a supplementary? Yes, Carry on. through you, Mayor. On the other hand, when it comes to funds and money, it has to be controlled very tightly. So you've got to look at both ways. I agree with him having more, and I agree coming back and getting the final approval from, on a tender from council. It goes, with, it goes both ways with me. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Anderson. Uh, whatever the amount, I like this process uh, because the public gets to hear what's uh, that was decided at a budget meeting, and not everybody uh, people didn't. That's not everybody shows up at a budget meeting, but this way everybody is, is look at the number of people here are understanding what's going on and how much it's costing. So, so we, so this has now become a debate on the policy. I'm not, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm back a, I'm gonna back this up, and if we have a debate with regard to the tender. Um, of $32,874, we can discuss that. At some point in the future, we will discuss the policy and the uh, and the, the processes that we use here in the municipality, if that's okay with everyone. Councillor Tadman? Yes, uh, Mayor, I, I just want uh, everyone to know that, um, and it was agreed by the majority of council, that we're spending about 900000 this year on our fleet. And... I know that I'm not supposed to say any more, but I'm going to say it anyways. I, I still would like to. I would have liked to have had more of a review of that. That we needed to spend all that in one year. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? The motion is carried. Our next report is from the Finance and Administration Department, the 2018 Reserve Balances. Mrs. Whittefield, we have read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Well, as Council is aware, I do have something to I do have something to add because as Council is aware, this document shows up at every budget um, in every budget document, and again, this time it's different than what you've seen. Um, please note that when you make changes to the budget and you're asking for some of the funds to be transferred um, from reserves, um, we work it into the budget. But right now we're looking at 2018, and there were changes in your budget document or our balance forward. And the reasons for that are projects that we thought were being carried forward were being um, were actually expended in 2018, and um, finance staff weren't aware of it until much later in this process. So our balance forward is lower. I think if you um, if you see um, some of the development charges um, and. Um, urban infrastructure, there were a few changes in there, and the gas tax. That um, is different than what you saw in your budget books. But what we're seeing here in your report reflects what is accurate, is accurate. for the reserves Correct. as of the end of 2018. Yes. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that Council receives a staff report regarding the 2018 reserve balances, and that Council approves the 2018 reserve balances report. 
And further, that Council receives the 2018 Development Charges Reserve Report and authorizes the Treasurer to provide a copy of the financial report to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing as required by legislation. Is there any discussion? Councillor Rowley? May I just ask one question? I think um, under Public Works, the 600 and change in, is that for the Monk? Street project transfers in is that that most of that's coming out again for Monk and Napoleon Street for, for those three roads as well as the hundred and thirty thousand that gets transferred in through the the budget. Yes. Thank you. Anything further? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. Our next report is also. For you, Mrs. Whittefield, with regard to the Ontario Community Infrastructure Reserve Fund, we have read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council receive the staff report regarding the Ontario Community Infrastructure Reserve Fund, and further, the Council approves the establishment of the Ontario Community Infrastructure Reserve Fund for the deposit of an interest earned by the OSIF grant. Is there any discussion? All those in favour? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And Mrs. Whittefield, we have a report request for promotional advertising. We've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The Council supports the request for promotional advertising from Courageous Companions for a business card-sized ad in the amount of $279 plus tax. And the Council supports supports the request for promotional advertising from the Royal Canadian Legion Ontario Command for a business card size ad in the Military Service Recognition Book in the amount of $256.64 plus tax. Is there any discussion? All in favour? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. Our next report is with regard to the blue dot uh, declaration from the clerk's office. Mrs. Doran, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? I do not, um, other than, I'm hoping this is, this is working, is it? It is? Okay. Um, there are some people in the audience from the Blue Dot. Um, the, I think the lady that did the presentation, Pamela, is she here? Oh, she yeah. is. <laughs> um, from the presentation that was given to council previously. Um, and this is just a follow-up report uh, from council's recommendation to come back with a... Coming out of that meeting. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have a motion moved by... Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council receives the staff report regarding the Blue Dot Declaration, the right to a healthy environment, and that Council endorses a, reg a resolution declaring that the Council of the Municipality of Brighton give residents the right to a healthy environment, and that the modified Blue Dot Declaration, adapted Blue Dot Movement Municipal Declaration, right to a healthy environment, Appendix E, be adopted, and that the Mayor, on behalf of Council, be directed to forward a copy of the Declaration to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. And further, that the Mayor, on behalf of, the, of Council, be directed to forward a copy of the Declaration to the Prime Minister of Canada, the Premier of Ontario, and Federal and Provincial Ministers of the Environment, calling for the development of provincial and federal legislation that recognizes that all people have the right to live in a healthy environment. Is there any discussion? All in favour? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And Ms. Doran, your next report is the delegation of authority with regard to MFIPA. We've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Um, no. Sorry. No, this is just more of um, a housekeeping item. Um, I've been doing this because it was through my job description to do so and through my bylaw, but there was an actual bylaw from Council. Thank you. I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Council LeBlanc, that Council receive the staff report regarding delegate authority for the Municipal Freedom of Information Protection and Privacy Act. And further, that Council adopt a bylaw delegating the powers of Council to the Clerk to act as head for MFIPA purposes. Is there any discussion? 
This changes nothing operationally. This is how we've been operating. Thank you. All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. Our next staff report is with regard to a sidewalk tractor purchase. Mr. Parkinson, we have read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. I have a motion moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor LeBlanc. The Council received the staff report regarding the purchase of a sidewalk tractor and further the Council approved the purchase of a new McLean MV4 sidewalk tracker, tractor with implements in the amount of $169,950.32 plus HST. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. Our next staff report is with regard to a wheel loader purchase. Mr. Parkinson, we have read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? No, I do not. I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council receives the staff report regarding the purchase of a wheel loader, and further that Council approve the purchase of a new wheel loader in the amount of $246,190 plus HST. Is there any discussion? Councillor LeBlanc? Through you, Mayor, to Director of Public Works, what happens with the used uh, loader? The used loader will be surplused. So that means it'll be sold off at auction? Yeah, it'll, it'll be sold through Gov deals, which is part of our purchasing policy to sell equipment oh, yeah. and whatnot. Thank you. Councillor Tadman? I could support this uh, because of, of the age of the other one. I, at some time, Mayor, could we um, just have a report from our mechanic in in how much work he's actually doing in each one of them because if if vehicles are maintained I think we should be getting a longer life and I know the argument is that we have to replace them every so many years but I drive a 206 and I just keep repairing it so sometimes I think you know to save money instead of buying something brand new like this I think um, maintenance should be a high priority Thank you, Councillor Tadman. Do, do you receive reports with regard to um, what vehicles are in what condition through your department? Well, we did a condition assessment of the vehicles, and uh, these, this and a couple other were identified just purely because of age. Um, you know, 27 years old, that's, that's pretty unheard of for a frontline piece of equipment because uh, we you know, we load winter sand with that, we do snow removal, we do road construction, and all that sort of thing. So this is purely age on this vehicle. Councillor Anderson. I think it's noted also that uh, on this machine, as well as others, you've put an extended warranty on it, so that should uh, help a little bit. There's a cost to that, but you must have measured that. Yes, there's a cost in it, and uh, we went with the basic warranty on a couple other than the grader, and I can speak to more of that when we get to that report. Thank you, Mr. Parkinson. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Councillor Bateman? I think it's pertinent to note that this is replacement because it's aged in the previous one that we've already discussed and voted on, the sidewalk thing. That's to complement the staff. New equipment. Yeah. yeah, because our sidewalks have grown quite a bit since we've been using one. So. Anything further? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. And Mr. Parkinson, you wanted to talk about a grader. Here we are. If you have anything to add or highlight with regard to that report. Uh, just to speak to the warranty question, uh, this one we went with basically the bumper-bumper warranty on the grader. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit different piece of equipment. It's highly technical. Uh, there's a lot of hydraulics. There's a lot of digitized uh, operation of the, the vehicle. That It's going to have a digital slope. Uh, system built in so they set it at 3% they grade the road and the blade stays at 3% so we get a proper crown on our roads and it, it also has a lot of electronics in regards to even uh, it doesn't have a steering wheel it's driven by joysticks so um, all the hydraulics and all the uh, function of the blades and the uh, packer on the back of it the um, ripper anything that we put on it or is all kind of digitally dr driven through hydraulics so uh, I felt it was a pretty good investment to, to spend the, the money on an extended warranty that covers all of those electronics. 
Thank you, Mr. Perkins. And I have a motion moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor LeBlanc, that Council receive the staff report regarding the purchase of a 2019 grader, and further that Council approve the purchase of a new 2019 grader with rear-mounted roller packer at a cost of $381,550 plus HST. Is there any discussion? How old is our current grader? It's 22 years old. So it sounds like a lot of technological changes have happened in the last quarter century. There's been a couple, yes. So go ahead, Councillor Bateman. I, I, th I think we need this. The only question I have is how much training do you have to send somebody to get trained on this, judging by the sound of it? <laughs> well, that's a two-part question. So uh, <laughs> the manufacturer is going to train all of our existing operators on that piece of equipment, and then we also send new operators out for greater training so that they learn how to build roads and grade roads properly. But the training for this specific piece of equipment is included in the purchase of it. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Tadman? I see the necessity in having a new grader after 22 years, and I don't know, with all that new stuff on it, um, do we really need all that? Or how much, you know, can we get a grader that doesn't have all the... I don't even understand driving something with a joystick. I thought you just played games with joysticks. No. They fly large planes with joysticks, so... Okay. Well, can drive yes, track. but we're not going to fly. We're just going on roads. Exactly. <laughs> this this so is essentially an, an entry-level grader. It's one of the smallest they make. Uh, it only has a 12-foot mow board on it so that we can do our narrow roads with it. The only plus is... Uh, the, this X slope that they put on it to set the slope of the road and that was largely divised, or, uh, devised from the way I've seen a roads constructed in the last few years and the complaints I've seen and the improvements that council wants to make as far as uh, road construction so I think it's uh, it's an essential piece of equipment. Councillor Tadman? Through you Mayor uh, to Preston uh, so we're not keeping the old grader? No it'll be surplus through gov deals. Why aren't we keeping it and then we could get a whole bunch more roads done? Because Is it barely it? starts. Well, and I don't have the staff to operate it. So how many people are you going to train to use this high-tech grader? We currently have three uh, equipment operator twos, which would operate this piece of equipment. So would we have a lot of rural roads. Would we be grading every day? The, it, the weather? Yes, permits? weather permitted, we can be grading especially during construction, uh, we'll be using it just about every day. Okay, seems like a lot of money to me. Okay. It is a lot of money. Any further questions? Councilor LeBlanc? Through Mayor to direct, <coughs> Director of Public Works, you understand there's a, there's, a, there's a balance between fixing our roads and speed. The better we get our roads, the faster people go on them, the more complaints that we get that people are speeding. Can you leave a few potholes to slow some of the people down <laughs> so we don't have to put stuff? But also... I'm cutting you off. No. Okay. <laughs> but the new, the new generation, they're all into these joysticks and how they do these games. These guys pick up this really quick. A guy like me, I'm on a steering wheel. Anyway, thank you very much. We can hire students. To <laughs> thank you, Councilor LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. And Mr. Parkinson, you have a two-ton truck purchase. Do you have anything to add or highlight with regard to this report? Uh, only that this one's slightly over budget by $552, I believe. But we've realized savings on other pieces of equipment to cover that almost all of the other pieces of equipment in tonight's reports. I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Council LeBlanc, that Council receives the staff report regarding the two-ton truck purchase and further that Council approves the purchase of a new 2019 Ford F-550 4x4 two-ton truck with dump box and chipper cap, western snow plow and western sander unit as per tender PW 2019-07 in the amount of $93,523 plus HST. Is there any discussion? I'll go ahead, Councillor Bateman. I was just going to ask Preston, is this to add to the complimenter to replace? This replaced a truck that broke down sometime last fall and it required too much repairs. It wasn't worth uh, fixing, so this is a replacement. Any further discussion? All in favor? 
Any opposed? The motion is carried. And Mr. Parkinson, this is a half ton pickup truck purchase. Do you have anything to add or highlight with regard to this report? No, I do not. This one's under budget by $7,200. I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor Blanc, that Council receive the staff report regarding two new half ton pickup trucks and further the council approve the purchase of two new half ton pickup trucks in the amount of $81,333.84 plus HST. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And Mr. Parkinson, we have a report with regard to the purchase of a three quarter ton pickup truck. Do you have anything to add or highlight on this report? Just that this one was under budget by a little over $3,500. Thank you, Director. I have a motion moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor Blanc. The Council received the staff report regarding two new three-quarter ton pickup trucks. And further, the Council approved the purchase of two new three-quarter ton pickup trucks in the amount of $104,602 plus HST. Is there any discussion? Councilor Tadman. Once again, I, I, it just baffles my mind that we need this many vehicles all in one year. So I won't be supporting it. To, um, we're going to have the shiniest, brand newest, best looking trucks, and vehicles, all, all kinds of vehicles in the whole area by far. But I don't really, I can't, I can't get it through my head that we need all of this in one year. That's $900,000 there, folks. Any further discussion? Councillor Rowley? I would just like to make the comment that uh, we are all about service delivery and if we have equipment, we can maybe get all of the ambitious projects done that Public Work has uh, put out. Councillor Tadman. We can deliver good service with a, um, a truck that isn't brand new. Is there any further discussion? And just as a reminder, we do borrow internally for our, our fleet maintenance or for our fleet uh, replacement. Um, so these are not uh, fully costed or fully paid for in one budget year. They're paid for over the period, the life of the vehicle, um, which depending on what vehicle it is, is, is amortized over a longer period of time through reserves. Is there any further discussion? Go ahead, Councillor Tadman. And, and just further to what you said, Mayor, we still pay for it and, and interest on it by borrowing the money. Yes, we do pay ourselves interest, that's right. Any further discussion? All those in favour? Any opposed? The motion is carried. I think that's it for you, Mr. Parkinson. Our next report is with regard to medical oversight agreement with Lake Ridge Health. And our report is from the fire department. Chief, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Uh, if I may, uh, Your Worship, uh, just uh, very briefly, I'll give you kind of a high-level overview of this. It is a fairly wordy document, but uh, basically what it does is it allows, it will allow our, uh, our fire department volunteers, once properly trained, we will be uh, carrying uh, naloxone with us and epinephrine, which are two very life-saving drugs that we can utilize uh, in uh, drug overdose and if someone is uh, suffering from anaphylaxis. Uh, so this is uh, part of uh, this agreement and it has to be done through medical oversight of a doctor and that's basically what we're, uh, we're going to have with this agreement. Also, Lake Ridge Health uh, does uh, share in that liability when we are util utilizing those drugs because we are doing it under a doctor's order uh, as well as they uh, with our liability uh, insurance um, we are covered should something go wrong because once you start administering drugs that there's always a potential. The other side of this is uh, service delivery. Um, there is, they have a, a fairly rigid um, program that we have to follow when it comes to delivery of uh, defibrillation. Our equipment has to be tested and maintained or tested by them to ensure that it is working properly and it just uh, it overall will just simply uh, increase the level of service that we're going to be providing to uh, our uh, visitors and uh, public here in Brighton. 
Thank you, Chief. And I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, seconded by Council LeBlanc, that Council received the staff report from the Fire Chief regarding medical oversight agreement with Lake Ridge Health, and that Council authorized the Mayor and CAO to execute an agreement between the Municipality of Brighton, Brighton Fire Department, and Lake Ridge Health to provide medical oversight to the Brighton Fire Department under bylaw number 124. 2016 and further that appendix C core services provided of bylaw number 124 2016 maybe that's wrong so we will that will read under a bylaw because that will pass later right uh, if I may uh, your worship uh, the Bylaw that needs to be amended is under core services under our current establishing and regulating bylaw because we have to add that in as part of our core service now. Right, but the first paragraph here is the entering into the agreement with that. that so is that's, a separate that's bylaw. the bylaw that yes. we'll read later tonight. So yes, if it's okay with Councillors Rowley and LeBlanc, I will be amending that, that second paragraph to read the final line to read medical oversight to the Brighton Fire Department under a bylaw which we will read later tonight. And further that Appendix C, core services provided of a bylaw number 124-2016, being a bylaw to establish and regulate a fire department within the municipality of Brighton, be amended to add the additional levels of coverage as provided by the medical oversight. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. next report is your uh, monthly report, Chief. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Not at this time. I have a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council receives the Fire Department Activity Report for March 2019. Is there any discussion? Councillor Tadman? Thank you, Mayor. Th through you to, uh, to our Fire Chief Kadic, Um I just wanted to mention that I've used the I got my burning permit and I make my call when I'm starting and when I finish and it works excellently. I encourage everybody to to use that service because then you you know where the fires are and uh, even though I sit at the water and I probably got a heck of a lot more water in that bay and you got in your hydrant. Councillor Tadman, could you bring the microphone closer? Yes, certainly. But I still think uh, it, it's a really good program and I encourage everybody to use it. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. No, this first, first, next one is uh, Mr. Castleman, and then we'll go back to Rick. Our next report is with regard to the Investing Canada Infrastructure Program funding, the county report, um, and is with regard to the delegation that we heard this evening from the county. Mr. Castleman, we've read your report. Do you have anything to add or highlight? Um, a couple things to, uh, to highlight. Uh, staff have uh, uh, reviewed the joint submission with respect to relocating the EDR um, to uh, north of 401 onto Telephone Road. Uh, in our view, it's an excellent partnership with both Crammy and uh, and the uh, county. Uh, the one concern that uh, that I had was to ensure that uh, it in no way jeopardizes our number one priority, which is the waste treatment plant and the MBBR project. Uh, and I've uh, looked at the program very carefully and had discussions with the county and also had discussions with our uh, federal MP office to ensure that this will not jeopardize uh, uh, an application uh, f in support of our MBBR project. And I've been assured that it will not. Uh, there are four streams of, uh, of funding. This is the rural and northern community stream. And if we were to make an application under this stream ourselves, we would be precluded from doing so. But since we will be uh, uh, applying to support the MBBR project under the green program once the intake has uh, been launched, which we anticipate later on this summer or early fall, um, uh, that's the program that we'll be making an application for. So I don't view this as uh, in any way jeopardizing our ability to make application uh, under the, uh, the fourth stream of this project. 
Thank you, Mr. Councilman. Mr. Councilor LeBlanc, does that answer your question about grants? Thank you. I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson. Whereas the Investing in Canada Infrastructure Program, ICIP, in, unlocks up to $30 billion combined federal, provincial, and local investments in communities across the province over the next 10 years. And whereas the ICIP has opened the first intake for rural and northern communities funding stream. And whereas the ICIP requires that a resolution of the Municipality of Brighton Council be included with the application approving the candidate project. And whereas the Municipality of Brighton in partnership with the Township of Cramie and, the, and Northumberland County are collaborating to complete the relocation of the emergency detour route, EDR, as a joint project to better serve our communities. And whereas the relocation of the EDR <clears throat> has been identified as top priority in Northumberland County Transportation Master Plan. Now therefore be it resolved that Council authorizes staff to jointly submit an application to the ICIP for the EDR relocation project. And further be it resolved that the Municipality of Brighton commits $447,000 in financing toward the cost of this initiative to be completed by 2026 should the application be successful. Is there any discussion? Councillor Bateman. I'm in support of this. I just had one question surrounding it. Once this happens and it's all completed, does this cover the cost of the, the new signage to, or is that going to be an add-on? I, I think certainly, uh, as, as Denise had mentioned, uh, detailed design has not been completed yet. That'll be part of the project and the uh, overall $13.4 million project. So signage obviously will be a component, uh, but that's yet to be determined. Any other comments or questions? Councillor Rowling? Thank you, Mayor. Um, as this isn't there yet, and until it's approved, we won't have to uh, do anything regarding uh, dollars, so it'll probably show up in next year's budget then, right? Or, or, we'll, or, or we'll start to show up in next year's the, budget. Yeah, kind of like yeah. a half a percent, I yeah. think. I mean, like a, a half percent infrastructure levy or something like that. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> I'm terribly unsmooth, actually. All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And our next staff report is a verbal report regarding flood awareness and preparation. Uh, Chief Caddick, you have the floor. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Your Worship, uh, to you and uh, Council. Uh, Indeed, I'm, uh, I wish I didn't have to be bringing you this report tonight, but uh, I do have to because certainly we are experiencing some uh, of the initial stages of uh, flooding. Uh, Lake Ontario is, is uh, making its, let's hope not annual rise, but it seems to be that way. And uh, so we are uh, starting and have uh, done a quite a bit of preemptive work, as I call it, to, uh, to be ready uh, when, if and when the levels reach the, the uh, uh, where they're, the levels that they're predicting we could get. Um, just to, to kind of begin, uh, we, uh, of course, last, in 2017, we experienced uh, some very significant flooding and it affected our lake shore, or bay shore area. Um, and we, I have to say, we learned a lot of lessons from that. And uh, so out of that time and out of, out of that whole experience came some, uh, came a, a, an annex, if you will, to our emergency plan, which was with flood response. We've certainly, uh, when we seen this was going to happen, that was put into play quite early on. And, uh, and I have to, to say, uh, at this point, at this stage, uh, and please, uh, you know, I, I'm going to speak to you in, in terms of where we are today, and, and that can all change tomorrow uh, with you know we don't know what mother nature is going to throw at us so we're going to uh, but I think and I know we're in a, in a much better position today than uh, we were two years ago when we were faced with a very similar issue uh, I certainly attribute a lot of that to to the planning process but I also attribute a lot of it to uh, our staff um, 
Preston, uh, a director of public works, has uh, had, unfortunately, had experience in this area before. So he brought with him a great knowledge of that, of some of the processes that they used in the Prince Edward County. And we've employed them as well with our plan and uh, I think have been uh, very, uh, very successful. So, uh, thus far, and uh, I certainly uh, look forward to. I'm going to show you a few of the initiatives, and and let's if we can get this thing to work. Let's see here. Now, yeah, sure. Yeah, my eyes are really good. Okay, so I'll just start off. That is, this graph that I'm showing you is uh, is a graph that uh, I seem to look at on a almost daily basis and uh, this is is a graph that's it's provided uh, by the uh, Great Lakes uh, and the Lake Ontario the the um, oh, I'm trying to think of their official name through it's the United Shorelines and it's an international body that that monitors the lake level and you can see in 2019 that's where we are today and that's the dark line and that's uh, where we're at and then when it goes to a dotted line that is the projected where they think we'll be the 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 wide uh, variance if you will from the 95 percent dry to five percent wet is what mother nature might throw us as far as rain events wind events what have you the 2017 is the the dotted line that's above that and so as you can see they're, they're telling us right now we're going to stay under that level and we're certainly uh, optimistic that they are correct in that uh, in that assumption um, I can tell you uh, on a daily basis I'm in uh, on a conference call with the province and uh, so far, all all predictions have been fairly close, so we're hoping that's good. The, the thing that you need to understand is that it can change drastically, as I said earlier, uh, with a, a rain event, a wind event, will impact our shore greatly, and the, and the whole bowl effect of the lake. If the wind is moving to, to the north, uh, or if, I'm sorry, from the south, in a south wind, we're going to get hit, and it, it'll raise our levels inches in, in a very short order. So as, if we get a south wind, a southwest wind, or a southeast wind, and, and a rain event, it impacts our shoreline. And we've seen that a week ago Monday. Uh, we had a, a, a storm event come through, and we were watching waves three and four feet crash in over top of the shoreline and flood yards. It didn't last that long, and, if, and uh, so that certainly started to dissipate quickly, and that was a good thing, but uh, today in those areas, everything's dry. But as you can see, it's, it's very unpredictable, but we're, we're, uh, we're staying ahead of the, the curve, if you will, I think, and we're, we're moving forward. So just currently, you can see some of the, I just took a few shots today of the, that's the Ontario Street dock on your left. Uh, the right is on Harbor Street, it's the, at the, uh, um, right by the harbor. Um, I can tell you in 17, there was a lot more water uh, around that area, that parking lot was pretty much flooded. So the levels are, t as of today, are still staying fairly, uh, they're, they're high, we know that, but, but they're, they're still quite manageable. And a few other, um, down at the interior street dock there again, you can see the culverts are almost totally submerged. And uh, the docks, we've been watching them and, and uh, I, I have to commend the uh, Parks and Rec staff. I know they were gearing up for a busy weekend last weekend and they were putting added pallets and lifts onto the docks so that people were able to access them without access through there with, because otherwise they'd have been uh, moving through several inches of water that is, has covered the approaches to those docks. So uh, again, I can't emphasize how important it's been a, a team effort and uh, the, uh, the, we've been moving forward and progressing in a, in a good fashion. Whoop. So when we started to see things were happening and uh, that we knew we were going to, uh, to have some issues, there was discussion between CAO Castleman, Director Parkinson and myself, and we continued to, to discuss and meet uh, last week. It was uh, every morning at 8.30. We had a discussion usually in uh, the CAO's office and uh, talked about where we were at, where we were heading, any problems that we could see. So what we did in this time, of course, uh, we found in the last uh, 
in 17 there were some uh, areas that we knew would have issues so there was a bulk sand and bag uh, uh, depots if you will set up there and uh, that was of course conveyed to the public in a press release by uh, by Mayor Ostrander and we've uh, again at Shoal Point Ontario Street 67 Sharp Gosport Boat Launch and Greenway Circle those uh, those depots have have been set up people have been using them staff have been replenishing them with bags and sand as as, as quickly as they could of course the uh, um, with the uh, weekend and the tournament going on the walleye tournament made it a bit of a challenge for the for the large trucks to maneuver in there so there was some times that there wasn't much sand but it wasn't only a short while and then uh, as soon as the traffic cleared the tandem trucks were hauling in again and I can assure you that just driving around and talking to a lot of the residents that are affected, they are they are a lot. Everyone is very calm. They're they're going. They know what they have to do. They've been through this before, and uh, you know I, I have to to think that this week is is emergency preparedness week in the province of Ontario, and it certainly speaks to the. Uh, I can tell very very confidently say that the people in Brighton are well prepared, and they they certainly know what they have to do. In addition, so we, we decided uh, in discussion, of course, with uh, with uh, Preston that we needed that we could look at a couple of ways that we could uh, service or get sandbags to and uh, to assist our residents. And the first we said was the bulk sand and bags, which we've done. The second was uh, something that uh, Preston had done in Prince Edward, and it certainly has worked really well. Is is we've actually refitted four of our sand trucks to to be used as a what I call a, a kind of a mobile bagging site where the, the truck can go in full of sand and uh, we can uh, pull it right up to the site and we can begin bagging sand right at the location. And I know on our very first run out with it, uh, we were down in the Shoal Point area, which is a fair fair uh, piece from here, but we were down there and I think there was four of us uh, there, uh, Preston, myself, and uh, two of the public works staff. And within 20 minutes, we bagged off over 100 bags of sand. So that's pretty a pretty rapid rate rather than shoveling it. And we were pushing it right off the truck and uh, getting there. We also uh, have gas and electric pumps available. Of course, that's still, uh, still uh, those are still in stock from uh, 2017. And our volunteer firefighters, are, of course, are always available. Now, I'll talk a little more about the volunteer piece as, as I move through the presentation. You can see there, there's just a, uh, the, the public works staff doing some sandbagging down on Bay Street uh, just last week, last Thursday, I believe. So I have a little video I'm going to show you, and this is the the new the the sandbagging system that uh, that basically, if I can only how well you can see that, but the bag is put right by the chute. One guy pulls it off, one guy's running right the button, and you can bag sand at a very rapid rate, and it comes right to you to the to your door, if you will. Now we we have that more in reserve because if we are in an emergent situation where we need to to quickly deploy that uh, that type of equipment is providing we can get the equipment close enough is something you need. As you can see, they're just moving along there, sandbagging on Bay Street, pretty rapid, and uh, it's 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 quick and very efficient. So I was really really excited to see that, and it certainly uh, just uh, lent to uh, to a, a more speedy response in a and the time when we needed it. So talking about volunteers, um, the, uh, we have developed a master list of volunteers. Um, we currently have about... What are we on here? Sorry, just a moment. Uh, we have 15 individuals uh, and groups on the list. Uh, people willing to have have notified us. So we are asking the public that if they wish to volunteer, they certainly can. There's a several ways to do it. They can uh, contact the fire department, and we can take their uh, their application, if you will, over the phone. They can go on to our municipal website and on the fire department page. They can still print the uh, fire the uh, sandbag volunteer form is still available. 
available there that they can print it. The only thing we ask them is do not use the link that's attached at the bottom of it because it has an incorrect address on it and it won't send it to us. So you have to send it to the, to email it to the fire department at to bfd at brighton.ca. So anyone wanting to do that, we certainly encourage the public to register. Um, we, we keep this uh, list and we continue to update it daily. It's available to all our staff on the K drive. We keep it there so that if we, you know, in the event that we need people in a hurry, we're telling them they will be notified via email. We're not calling them. They're going to get an email to say, come to this location and we'll, uh, we'll certainly train as, as we move along from there. The other thing is the uh, service club. We have had a service club come forward and offer to assist to, with demand pumps and that sort of thing. So again, just a, a very good uh, awareness of how, uh, how the, uh, the, our public is stepping up and, uh, and making things happen. I did want to mention, and I, I, I apologize, I stepped ahead a little bit, but uh, currently um, the staff at uh, Public Works, they, they have been uh, looking after deployment of sand and bags and, uh, and doing some initial assessment on property when people uh, contact us. So I, I do have a few stats on that I'd just like to share with you. Um, at this point, um, they, uh, they have received 19 different calls or uh, requests for assistance. Uh, out of that, they've made 19 site visits, of course, uh, either Preston or Gord, or will attend there to assess that situation and what is actually needed. Um, they have uh, given out, uh, let's see, they have a number of, uh, so we, we started out with about 13,000 sandbags. Oh, did you? Okay, so we, so we do we have six thousand left? We have 6, so okay, so we we currently have about six thousand left in stock, uh, and uh, just recently, as this week or late last week, uh, Preston has arranged for another ten thousand to be delivered. We also have the uh, the availability of our neighbors to the North Trent Hills has carries a very large cache of sandbags, and and I have had discussion with them, so we have those are at our at our disposal at, at any time. We've delivered at this point as of noon today 114.5 tons of sand have been uh, put in those five sandbag locations so it's being used so the people are actually they're doing they're doing exactly what they should be doing and, and we're really pleased with that um, and there's been over 4,000 sandbags provided at those locations 4,105 to be exact um, so these uh, and our staff in uh, on their own have filled 1930 bags at this time so we're certainly moving forward there's a lot of, uh, of good momentum and uh, again we're encouraging people to uh, if they want to volunteer come and let us know that um, and then we can uh, certainly uh, we will uh, engage them if required I do know that there are have been individuals personally just go and volunteer and assist. Uh, um, have some uh, there's been um, you know people go and help them carry and help people move sandbags and that's great. People are, are that's it's wonderful and that's the I guess the the good thing of being in a small community in Ontario. That's that's how people operate. So we're really we're really pleased with that. But know that we, if it if it really starts to get very critical, that we will be we'll will be calling on our volunteers to. To, to assist. So the uh, just resources again I'm just going to kind of cover this again for the the folks in the gallery and the, for the media that if uh, residents are requiring assistance to contact Brighton Public Works during the day during the daytime hours of, at 475 1162 and then their after hours uh, number is listed there at 967-8707 and then our, the staff will attend to assess the needs uh, at their location and then from that point resources can be ordered and they can certainly be given direction as to where they can receive those uh, those re needed resources. We uh, we continue to monitor and and uh, 
uh, our myself and the deputy and and I know Preston and Gord and they we are looking at it usually twice a day I, where I do the run or, or and we look at the I know the public works staff is out constantly so they're we're watching it uh, every day I participate in a uh, conference call with the province and we talk to the every municipality that's being affected by flooding in this province as well as uh, from Cornwall to Windsor and up north and so we we're Everyone gets their input and we can ask questions and the, the federal uh, agencies, provincial agencies are all on that call and that happens every day at noon. So uh, we're, we're keeping up on what's happening and we see trends and we know if we start to running into any challenges, uh, we can certainly, uh, it's a great uh, group that we can discuss and if we uh, need to, if we haven't done it, someone else may have uh, know how to, to uh, meet a challenge so we certainly use that uh, a lot and of course we keep uh, uh, the mayor posted through the through the CAO and uh, so we we will update as as uh, the situation progresses Basically, just a few shots from today uh, down in Shoal Point and on Harbor Street. As you can see, our residents are prepared, and they and it's uh, it, they they're they're very. When you talk to them, as I said earlier, they're very calm. They understand what's going to happen. They understand the reality of what could happen. Uh, we can only hope that it's. There, it will uh, it will soon crest, uh, but they're not telling us that, and it's ri rising on average of one to two centimeters a day. Now we may not always see that rise here because, as I said, of the bowl effect or the wind uh, as it may be at that day. Some days it looks like you think it's gone jumped up three or four inches, and then it comes back down. But overall, on the average, it rises one to two centimeters a day, and will continue. They said for at least they're they're thinking the last. The last report we had, which was Friday, uh, they're, they're hoping another week or two, but again, it, there's no definite answers on that. That's just a, an educated guess at this point. And that's all what I have, have to offer, unless there's any questions. Thank you, Chief. I'll, um, I'll read the motion, then I'll open the floor for discussion. Mm -hmm. Could I get someone to, um, no. to shut off the blindy light? <laughs> <laughs> so the CAO can return to his seat. Thank you very much. I have a motion moved by Council Rowley, second by Council LeBlanc, that Council receives a verbal report from Chief Fire Chief Rick Caddick regarding flood awareness and preparation as information. Any questions or comments from members of Council? Councilor Tadman. Through you, Mayor. Uh, thank you. And I do have more than one question. Am I allowed that at this time? We'll ask one and we'll see if there's others, but you'll be allowed to ask all your questions for sure okay go ahead and can i also make a couple of comments too does that count i'm not sure i could stop you probably not first of all i just want to say that uh, it things look a lot better this time than last time and, I, and that is it's fortunate that uh, we we had a real learning curve the last time um i Witness last week on, I had a, as I said earlier, I had a fire, I think it was on a Sunday night. I got up in the morning and the lake had risen overnight with the, the rush of the water and the waves coming in. And the, I had it on the shore and it washed all the ashes out and lost that much. And then I found out it was about 15 centimeters in one week that it had risen. And since then, I check it every day, and I keep having to move up on my grass all the time. And every time it blows, as you say, out of the south, southeast, or southwest, it's taking, and it's eroding more and more. So there's not an awful lot you can do. You can't stop that. Um, and I've got two beautiful big trees on the water that I can't, you know, I could put all the sandbags in the world, it's not going to stop them stop them from going down if, if, the, if we get some high winds. But um, there's two things, and I'll ask the first question because it's the most important in my mind at this point is that uh, because I care about those who have accessible problems and I sit on the committee, are we, are we looking after the people that can't look after themselves? In an answer, yes. Um, 
to this point, uh, we have had uh, one individual that had spoke to us regarding that they weren't able to move sandbags and we did have some folks step right up and uh, and looked after that. I know that uh, this is why Preston and his staff attend at those scenes. They make an assessment of that if they and if they feel that volunteers are needed or warranted they can certainly they contact us immediately and we'll dispatch people there to whether it be our volunteer firefighters or or some of our volunteers to to attend to that. Uh, Preston, do you want to speak to that or no? Yeah, That's okay. pretty much. It's just um, because I've always either lived right at the water or very close to it and I'm not exactly a spring chicken so I've spent a long time and I've noticed like there is a cycle and, and there is a high uh, water level and a low level but at this point it's as high as it's ever been in my lifetime right now and we're getting more rain and as soon as we get more we're going to have problems I can see it we have put a we last council we did that whole uh, Bay Street and last time two years ago it was coming over there we had carp on Harbor Street I, I was along um, Queen Street today and the backyards are all flooded there and that's not even at the water that's two streets up so it's not going to be long we're going to have some trouble I, I'm almost positive of it if and especially if we get any wind the only other thing I just wanted to say then thank you very much for letting me talk um, that that one ho house on, on Lilac Lane especially at Preskill was really damaged last time I was just wondering should we not have some sand over at Preskill because there's other places over there that have problems too so uh, if I can speak to the the lilac lane I was actually at that property last week uh, since last year's uh, situation they've added what two I think two feet to their to their break wall and so they're in a little better shape this year than they were then um, there are there is uh, sand right at the Ontario Street dock ready for folks there to press kill and if if they're required you know in an emergent situation we can certainly assess that and, and move uh, move sand into that location they had thousands and thousands of dollars of damage and they had to invest a lot of money to to build that that wall but when that so they'd be getting it from the north wind if in north or or east or, yeah, yeah north east or, east or, they north, get, east yeah. or west but if it blew like it did a couple of Sundays so it'll go over that two foot that they put up there and right back in so yeah I, I think they've actually uh, there was they had inquired as to where they could get sand so there are uh, there are able to, I know they've made some inquiries uh, thus far because I that uh, lilac lane address I've heard about already further to that thank you very much um, there's a lot of other places they're affected also so why not just put a pile of sand over there well, I think uh, and uh, Preston maybe could speak to that because he's looking after the sand but I think if, if we see that there's a lot of requests coming from that area then that's certainly something we could look at actually I'm gonna I'm gonna back off of this um, we're getting into the weeds operationally so uh, we will we'll let if you have any if if you'd like to make those comments to the CAO offline Councillor Tadman I'm sure the CAO would be happy to discuss uh, the placement of sand if that's no okay. problem I've Thank already you. made the comments I, I'm I, sure you heard it I'm sure he did too <laughs> Uh, and just a, a reminder if there are any uh, seniors or, or people in, in any sort of um, accessible with accessibility concerns they should call Public Works at 1162 during the day um, and and they'll go out and assess those properties we don't have a crystal ball we don't know where everybody who, who may need help is currently sitting so if you do need help please don't hesitate to give us a call that's that's what the municipality is here to do we'll, we'll help out as best we can are there any other comments from members of council Go ahead, Councilor Bateman. I just want to thank them for the job they've done because they here. they do seem better prepared. Well, not that you were ill prepared before, but lessons have learned from the last time. But also, I think we have to acknowledge it's not just environmental. In 2014, 2015, when they changed that international committee, the outflow from the lakes with the flooding down the St. Lawrence River down into Quebec, that's what is, is affecting the, the rise of that lake as well. So hopefully they can 
get that under control in the near future and change what the, whatever they're doing. We'll see, we'll see how the International Joint Commission chooses to uh, deal with its policies moving forward. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. It's, it's kind of just a comment. Uh, I do live on Harbor Street now, so I did uh, receive an email from someone today uh, with a report from the Weather Network from yesterday saying now that they're thinking that the lake levels are going to exceed 2017. I'm not sure when. It's really hard because people read that and they do panic. So um, any information that we can get on a regular basis regarding that is helpful because people do ask uh, quite regularly. So. Thank you. Uh, Councillor LeBlanc. I, like uh, Councillor Beebe, would like to thank you for all the work you've done and the lessons learned from 2017 that are being applied to 2019. And uh, I saw those two young girls filling the sandbags at Gosport, helping all the people and lifting in the trunks and everything. I think one was 15 and the other one was possibly 16. So they did that for like five hours, which was very nice. And them doing it. And uh, I also offered my services to my employees on Friday to help out people that were accessibility of moving the sandbags with my trailers and trucks instead of their cars. But thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Anderson? Uh, just one question. Uh, great job, fellas, again, uh, for me. But I was talking to some folks down there, and they, that helped a lot on the last time. Uh, with uh, They have pumps, and they have them ready. How are you with pumps and uh, and that type of thing? Uh, there's a whole nucleus of, of people that live down there that are willing to help. I think it's great, um, and they have equipment. But how are you guys set up? If I may, uh, through you, uh, uh, Your Worship, uh, to Councillor Anderson, we still have, we made quite a significant purchase of pumps in 2017. Uh, and I'm going to pull in figures out of the air, but I think we have at least six, eight, about eight to ten gas powered pumps of either two inch or three inch. And we also have a whole cache of electric submersible pumps and that that after the flood in 17 we had them all refurbished and, and they're they're in they're ready to go they're we've tested them all they're all so we do have a fairly good uh, amount and i know they're the public works and water have pumps as well but these are ones that were purchased back then and we've uh, just continued to maintain them and have them ready at the ready to go at any time and I just want to ask one question. I noticed another community actually, you take a street like Bay Street, they're adding a few inches to the road. They're just going right down the road and adding, rather than, than bag it all, I don't know how effective the bags are. Well, the way you've done the bags look quite like they will be effective, but only for so much water. Um, but they're actually uh, in, um, raising the road. And now we have a new grader, so <laughs> we can try training. <laughs> what do you, what do you, is, I'm just asking, is, a, is that a possibility? Um, it's not something I would recommend uh, because all that three inch minus that you hold in to build the road and all the cement blocks they use to contain that material, you have to go retrieve and pick up and then haul back away. So a lot of our roads couldn't take that kind of abuse from picking that material up and scraping it. So you're going to do road damage. And then as far as uh, mitigating it, uh, that's not going to protect any properties. That's only, they're doing that to allow access to the properties. Yeah. So the water is still going to seep through and still going to flood beyond that. Uh, same as the sandbank walls, or sandbag walls. Um, if you're not pumping the water, you're not going to do anything. Because sandbags and the sandbag wall, even if properly built, is only going to slow the flow of water down. It's not going to eliminate it. So if they're not pumping on the back side of that wall to keep the water out, then there's no sense sandbagging the property to begin with. So it's been a bit of a give and take. And uh, you'll be into a large budget impact if we were to consider <laughs> building those roads up and uh, just to purchase the material and all the cement blocks and then to uh, hire in contractors to have the manpower to deliver those kind of upgrades to the road or those kind of barriers. Good. Thanks for your answers. Yeah. Councilor Tadman. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't even think we're allowed to put sand close to the water because of the conservation issues. But on top of it, uh, we tried one time because we thought it would be lovely to have a little sandy beach for our grandchildren and uh, lasted about two weeks. 
and so really all we're doing by putting sand near the water is is providing somebody somewhere but not at your <laughs> bay because it'll just wash out but the other thing I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that you're bagging all along Bay Street and I don't think people realize that we as taxpayers so the municipality owns right up to the very point I'm not saying that you're going to because where are you now you're almost at the corner at the lighthouse right when I checked today or did you get around there no we're going right around to Lambden Street right at the corner by the fence yeah that's where we're gonna stop that wall we actually own and there there is plans for a road that goes all in front of all those places all the way up there so I don't know whether it, legally do we need to do that or not. Maybe that's something that uh, our CIO could check out. Yeah, I, I think what we would do is simply protect our infrastructure, which would be Bay Street. Um, and and that's the, where the road is. And then the private houses uh, as, they, as, the, as it's needed. Yeah, and right. there's, some, yeah. there's quite a few private homes along there. But if there's, no, if there's no infrastructure, we wouldn't need to protect it in any but way. But just up the road, you know, the next street up, yeah. they're flooding there. So, and, and in two... 2017 they really flooded they really bad did. there yep yep and I see I see the director nodding his head so he's certainly aware of uh, those needs as well any other discussion so the motion is simply to receive the verbal report all those in favor are there any opposed the motion is carried we have no notices of motion or motions uh, the one piece of unfinished business that we've added to the agenda is the appointment of a member of council to the Bay of Quinty Regional Marketing Board. Um, who would like to speak to this? Council Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we, uh, we have approved uh, partnering with uh, the Bay of Quinty Regional Marketing Board. Um, meetings are starting. I believe that this week Mr. Stevenson is meeting with our CAO and um, both Deputy Mayor Vink and myself received an email and invitation to sit at their next meeting which is uh, May 17th. So it's a little bit timely and that was the reason for putting it uh, uh, on the agenda tonight as next week is planning so it's uh, not really appropriate to add it to a planning meeting. Um, I would like to uh, make a motion that council appoint uh, Deputy Mayor Vink as council representative to sit on the Bay of Quinney Regional Marketing Board. And do you have that in writing? Yes, I do have that in writing and I also have a seconder, uh, Councillor LeBlanc. So I'll take the form and I'll read the motion. The motion is moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council appoint Deputy Mayor Vink as Council Representative to the Bay of Quinty Regional Marketing Board. Is there any discussion? Go ahead. Uh, through you, Mayor, and, and to you, Deputy Mayor, I have no problem with you sitting there, but I didn't support uh, paying 17500 for this, so I can't support this appointment. Any further discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And we move into bylaws. Our first bylaw is moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. That council gives a bylaw, its first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw to adopt the estimates for the general purposes for the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton for the year 2019. Is there any discussion? Councillor Rowley. Thank you again. Um, uh, once again, I was um, just wondering, I'm hoping I can ask this, um, uh, the uh, home-based business issue has been a bugbear of mine for quite a while. Uh, is there an opportunity to set up a committee or meet with um, someone from MPAC? Um, I did speak with some uh, representatives at OSM this last week. Um, at, yeah, at OSM, as I said, um, they have an up. Their this is their assessment year again. Next year in 2020, we will be receiving notices of uh, new assessments for the uh, 21 to 24 assessment period. Is there an opportunity to invite them here to get um, some information on that and maybe 
meet with them, either with staff or representatives from this council, to um, discuss some of those issues? I see our CAO is, is nodding his head. The, the, the quick answer is both. I would, I would suggest that uh, uh, staff have a get-together with uh, MPAC rep representatives and uh, certainly we could uh, invite representatives to come before committee and council. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, I have a home-based business, and, and you've brought this up before, and uh, I did call them before. I, I don't have clients at my house or anything like that. I don't have people come in. I you know, work, work from an office in my home where I go out. So I did ask them, actually, I did call them and I asked them how it worked because I wanted to make sure I was doing it right and, and had an understanding of it. Not that this negates them coming, I'd like for them to come and explain it to us. Um, because I'm not sure that they necessarily do a good job because he explained to me that they, you know, if they see a sign or, you know, an idea that there's a business there, then, then they will assess some of it as, um, commercial and and it has to fall into certain categories as well like like I said someone just having an office at home necess doesn't necessarily qualify but someone who's bringing people into the home for business would but they also don't necessarily go looking for it I don't think and I think that's where you're concerned that we're losing out on some of this commercial tax right and I and I, and I, I know they don't come looking we don't come looking I don't want to put that onus on staff as well um, however so I'm, I'm just gonna we're, we're talking about the budget the bylaws sorry. with regard to the budget thank sorry. you I'll just I, leave it I allowed some we'll leeway uh, staff have the message loud and clear we will be when the impact people come perhaps we can ask them all the questions we need to ask them any further discussion on the bylaw? All those in favor? Any opposed? The motion is carried. Our next bylaw is with regard to the uh, contract services for Mount Hope Cemetery. I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson. The Council gives a bylaw. It's for second and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to formally approve and authorize the execution of agreement of an agreement for the provision of caretaker contract services to tourless property maintenance for the maintenance of the Mount Hope Cemetery. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And our final bylaw is the agreement to provide medical oversight. I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The Council gives a bylaw. It's for second and third reading and finally passes on this date. Being a bylaw to authorize the Mayor and the Chief Administrative Officer to execute an agreement to provide medical oversight services to the Brighton Fire Department by Lake Ridge Health for a period of May 6, 2019 to December 31st, 2021. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. We have no reports of advisory committees of council. We have no reports or minutes. Oh, yes we do. Our first uh, minutes of a, an external board is the Brighton Public Library and a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Bateman. The Council received the March 27, 2019 Brighton Public Library Board meeting minutes. Is there any discussion? All in favour? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And the Lower Trent Conservation Annual Report 2018. Motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Rowley. The Council receives the Lower Trent Conservation Annual Report for 2018. Is there any discussion? Councillor Tadman. Well, it all looked good here until they found out that the uh, provincial government cut um, them by f their, their um, amount that they give each year for source protection by 47%, which is going to have a huge impact on and on the service that they'll be able to do. And probably because it's another download, it'll affect what each municipality will have to pay because do we not want that kind of protection, source protection, water protection? And, and they do, as you can see, and this is just a, a minor version of the service they do all the time. And the forecasting, and I'm sure that you must read their bulletins all the time as they are forecasting the high levels and all the rest of it. 
they just won't have the money to do all of this and there will be layoffs and uh, I think it's very sad that uh, the provincial government at this point does not see uh, that as a being a necessary thing. So with that, uh, hopefully maybe enough people complain and maybe they'll change their mind. Any other comments? All in favor? Those opposed? The motion is carried. We'll move into correspondence. First piece of correspondence is from the municipality of Brockton, and I have a motion moved by Councillor LeBlanc, seconded by Councillor Rowley, that Council receive or support, I need to know which one you'd like to do, request from the, for the municipality of Brockton regarding motion on bilateral investing in Canada infrastructure program. Councillor LeBlanc, this is your motion. Do you want to receive? Thank you. Councillor Rowley, you okay with that? Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. Our next piece of correspondence is with regard to the Pet Value Walk for Dog Guide. Dog Guides? Dog Guides. I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council approve the special event road use for Pet Value Walk for Dog Guides fundraiser May 25th, 2019. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. Final piece of correspondence is from Art on Main, moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council approve the special events road use for Art on Main, July 6, 2019. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And we have three pieces of FYI correspondence, the first being from the Brighton Public Library, moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, the Council received the Brighton Public Library Board letter to David Piccini, MPP, regarding the announcement of the 50% budget cut to the Southern Ontario Library Service as information. Is there any discussion? Councillor Tadman. Well, both uh, Councillor Rowley and I sit on that board, and at this point, uh, I don't think that uh, they need to panic, but they certainly are going to suffer unless um, there's a, a better way of, of serv servicing, because they, over the course of the year, they um, rent from other libraries a, a lot of books and and so they may not be able to do that so we're hoping that there's other ways that uh, maybe they can work with other libraries in the area or whatever but uh, at this point I don't think anybody wants to really comment until we find out exactly what Souls is going to do. Thank you. Any further comment? All in favor? Are there any opposed? Motion is carried. FYI correspondence number two is with regard to Police Week. I have a motion moved by Councillor Rowley, seconded by Councillor LeBlanc, that Council receives the correspondence from the Northumberland OPP regarding Police Week, May 12th to the 18th, 2019, as information. Is there any discussion? All those in favour? Any opposed? The motion is carried. And our final piece of FYI correspondence is with regard to changes to the Fisheries Act from MP Cheryl Gallant. And I have a motion moved by Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that Council receive the correspondence from Cheryl Gallant, MP Renfrew, Snippasing, Pembroke, regarding Bill C-68, Fisheries Act changes for information. Is there any discussion? Go ahead. Just the fact that I was having a hard time uh, really understanding it. Does anybody else have any more information that that's on that small uh, motion that she made? Because I really don't know exactly why she is uh, putting that forward. As I read the letter, it's my understanding that um, when her party was in government, they need, made changes to the Act so that it was easier for um, people along the lakeshore to make um, changes to their lakeshore properties right, yeah. with regard to flood mitigation, mm -hmm. and the current government may be looking to change those back. That's that's my understanding from the letter. I don't know much about the legislation myself. So. Well, I think I would vote to receive it this time. It's just for, no more. We're just yeah. receiving it as information. We're yeah, not acting okay. on it in any way. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried.
And I'll ask the public if they have any questions with regard to items on our agenda. So this is question period. If you want to come forward, sir, the question has to be with regard to something that was on the agenda this evening. Yeah, yeah. Come on forward here, and we'll get a member of staff to give you a microphone because our meetings are recorded. There you go. If you, uh, just, state, if you could just state your name for the record. Yes, it's yeah. Des Rodriguez. Um, I thank you for the opportunity of speaking. This is my first uh, council meeting I'm attending. Um, I moved to this wonderful community uh, last September. So my question is actually to the fire chief, if I may. I'd like to start off by saying it was a very comprehensive uh, presentation you put forward, uh, providing a lot of excellent information. Um, one thing I'd like to refer back to uh, near the beginning of the presentation, where you had the graph showing the water levels of 2017 and um, the projection of the water levels of 2019. So if we can use the levels that we know occurred in 2017, can we now, based on that projection, which you were fairly confident uh, that it was going to be um, uh, you know, fairly reliable. We understand surges and weather is very hard to pinpoint or put your finger on, so to speak. But using that as a geographical template, 2017, I live in Gosport. My house, I'm halfway, I'm on Baldwin, halfway uh, between the lake and harbor. So my house was affected by the flood in 2017. So, again, using 2000. In 17 as a geographical template and the understanding of where the levels are going to be for 2019 should I be concerned or how is that message if any so I've seen sandbagging along the shoreline so how do I know that based on that projection that I may be affected or I should be concerned well I would think uh, it, you indicated that your property was affected in 17 and uh, albeit they're, they're telling us the levels should stay lower, there's no guarantee of that. So you as a property owner would have to make that decision as to when you want to make, when you want to start to sandbag. My recommendation would be to err on the side of caution. Okay. Okay. I can't, there's no definitive, this is the day you should, this is the day you shouldn't. Uh, I think we're looking at some mapping uh, that may help us down the road, but uh, that we don't, haven't received that as of yet. But may give you us know what I'm saying? Yes. We can simplify it and say in a hundred yard dash in 2017, it got to 80, um, 80 yards. We know this year it's going to be 50 yards yeah. and I live at 70, so I'm going to be okay. So, uh, so, okay. so I understand. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, I can simply say that in 2017, at this time that year, we hadn't started sandbagging, but you'll notice that the municipality this year has started sandbagging. So I didn't know, oh, thank you, Mayor. I, I didn't know yeah. if that was yeah. more precautionary or it, it I is. should be reading. It, it is precautionary, the lines, but, but if, if I live down at the lake, I would read between the lines. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are there, pardon? I think his question has been answered. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm going to go to the public. Are there any other questions from members of the public? Mr. Wielden? Is it a question? Uh, it's a point of clarification. With regard to? Uh, water levels. I just saw a report as of an hour ago whether that looks like we're going to pass 2017. Okay. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Vink made that note as well. That the, yeah, that's okay. Thank you, though. There you go. So. Maybe everyone would like to make that note. <laughs> uh, Through you, Mayor. Go ahead. There's another website, which is the U.S. Corps of yeah. Military Engineers. And so the past council put me on to that, and I've been watching it also. Yeah. What you're doing, it agrees with what you're saying. Go ahead, Councillor Tadman. You might as well. <laughs> you know I will anyway. I know you will. Uh, Baldwin Street will, will flood. Uh, and I think um, Mr. Rodriguez, uh, because it's free sand, and free bags, <laughs> wow. I would do it. Um, and and anyone else along Baldwin Street, because the marsh right now is almost yeah. coming up to the level of the road. Nothing's free, but it is paid for. So, yeah, it's there for your use if you need. Well, to he work. doesn't have to pay for it. Not so it's directly. free to him. Free. Well, he, he pays for it through his taxes. Is what I'm getting at. Any other questions, members of the public? Noted, thank you. 
We have no in-camera session, and I have a motion moved by Councillor Bateman, seconded by Councillor Anderson, that Council gives a bylaw its first, second, and third reading, and finally passes on this date, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Corporation of the Municipality of Brighton Council meeting held on May 6, 2019. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. And finally, I have a motion moved by Deputy Mayor Vink, seconded by Councillor Bateman, that the May 6, 2019 Council meeting adjourn at 8.55 p.m. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? All those in favor? Are there any opposed? The motion is carried. I'm not sure why you're voting against that. Right. <laughs> have a good evening, everyone. Thank you.